all right uh, assalamu alaikum uh, this is uh, talha bin nadim and uh, i am uh, today uh, i am going to start off the new topic uh, of indian cooling systems and uh, uh, this uh, topic is related to uh, the indian cooling and indian cooling is very essential since uh, very high temperatures are being achieved uh, inside the uh, cylinder because of the combustion of the fuel so cooling should be uh, cooling of such engines should be very efficient uh, for the better uh, and efficient performance so uh, starting off uh, with the with some of the necessities of the engine cooling that uh, why why do we uh, need uh, the engine cooling so uh, in an ic engine the temperatures uh, of the gases uh, inside the engine vary from very low temperatures to the very high temperatures if i mean that uh, during the intake <clears throat> the fresh air fuel charge comes into the combustion chamber and that fresh air fuel charge is at a relatively quite low temperature but during the combustion or we can say uh, after the combustion process what happens is that uh, a large an excessive amount of energy is being released and the temperature of these flue gases exceeds quite uh, quite uh, to a to a value uh, to a very higher values so uh, for that purpose we 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 need to do the cooling uh, of our ic engine otherwise the metallurgy of the engine uh, will be changed and uh, our engine will not perform efficiently and effectively and it will it will let it will lead to that damage permanent damage in our ic engine so uh, in an engine if an engine is allowed to run uh, without external cooling the cylinder wall cylinder and pistons will tend to uh, tend to the very high temperatures of the gases uh, because they are being they, they, it it can uh, because these piston cylinder and the piston rings and cylinder head are basically uh, enclosing the combustion chamber so very excessive temperatures are being uh, achieved uh, in the ranges of uh, 1000 to 15000 but in very large uh, engines high power high load engines uh, this temperature can exceed up to 2000 degrees celsius or maybe beyond that 2000 degree celsius in in very uh, very big very large engines so uh, cooling in such engines is uh, essential and it should be very effective and efficient as well so uh, obviously at such higher temperatures the metal will lose their characteristic and pistons will expand considerably and as a result of this expansion it can it can seize the liner so uh, it can seize your ic engine uh, now uh, the question is what is liner a liner is basically a protective coating which is being done on the cylinder walls so that uh, what happens that your liner gets damaged and your cylinder doesn't get uh, doesn't Uh, is not dis uh, not damaged uh, in case of a seizure in case of any failure in your ic engine so this liner is is uh, is of very importance in the ic engine because it is basically protecting your uh, cylinders if the cylinder wall temperature is allowed to rise above a certain limit the lubrication oil will begin to evaporate rapidly the or we can say that lubrication oil will not be lubricating the your, lubricating your ic engine very effectively because the engine temperatures has exceeded the limit exceeded the operating limit of 
that lubrication oil. So inefficient lubrication will result in the seizure of your IC engine and it will damage the piston and the cylinders as well. So in the view of this, a part of the heat generated inside the single cylinder is allowed to be carried away by the cooling system. So this is this is what we are doing that we are rejecting some amount of a heat willingly so that uh, our IC engine is not damaged so that our IC engine doesn't doesn't get uh, uh, seize and it keeps on operating uh, uh, under the normal conditions obviously this uh, heat rejection is the loss of energy and uh, uh, it is the dead energy which we are losing. We could have utilized that energy in in some useful work, but uh, this is what something we we have to do. Otherwise, our engine will be damaged. Now, moving forward, the cooling system is provided on an IC engine for the following reason: the even expansion of piston in the cylinder may result in seizure so if if uh, we do not cool our ic engine the pistons will expand to very higher values so that it will it will seize your ic engine high high temperature reduces the strength of the piston and cylinder liner because it changes the metallurgy of the piston and cylinder Overheated cylinder may lead to pre-ignition of the charge in case of SI engines. Again, uh, as I, I have explained uh, uh, several times that in SI engine, what happens that if this is our, pist this is our uh, piston cylinder device and uh, we have this air fuel mixture inside the combustion chain chamber, if the if the if the temperature of this piston and cylinder wall or cylinder head is quite high, uh, it will it will self ignite the fresh it will self ignite the air fuel mixture, which will lead to the pre ignition and it is known as knocking. So we want to avoid that and for that purpose, uh, and for that purpose, engine cooling is essential. Uh, next we. Next, the physical and chemical changes may occur in the lubricate, lubrication oil, which, which may cause the wear and tear in the piston and cylinder and may cause the chemical changes in the piston, uh, piston rings as well, uh, may cause the stickiness in the piston ring as well, if, if we do not cool uh, the IC engine. So, uh, this is this is also very important uh, key point here that Indian cooling is not only protecting the engine but it is also protecting the lubrication oil as well. So otherwise, uh, if any physical and chemical changes in the lubrication oil occur, it will result in inefficient lubrication and will lead to the engine failure. Next, uh, we have uh, if the if the cylinder head temperature is high the volumetric efficiency and hence the power output of the engine is also reduced so uh, if we are rejecting the higher amount if if uh, the cylinder temperatures are quite high and we are not cooling it to the uh, desired values the volumetric efficiency uh, will also be reduced because the air fuel uh, because the uh, air fuel mixture which is coming into the uh, inside the combustion chamber it will get the less mass of the air uh, since the temperatures are quite high uh, which will result in the increase in density and the lesser amount of the air would be coming into the combustion chamber <coughs> the then we have uh, uh, thus engine engine cooling is required to keep the temperature of the engine lower in order to avoid loss of volumetric efficiency and hence power 
it, it will avoid engine seizure and it will avoid danger to the engine failure. Uh, similarly, we can also add here that it will avoid pre-ignition of fresh air fuel mixture. Uh, it is also going to avoid that and not only it will avoid the pre-ignition but it will also it will also avoid the physical and chemical changes of the lubrication oil as well so it is it is also very key point here and we can add uh, these points uh, in this section moving forward so almost about 25 to 35 percent of the total heat supplied, uh, uh, total heat which is being uh, supplied as a result of a combustion uh, must be removed uh, by the cooling medium. And the amount of a heat which is being carried away by the lubrication oil and as a result of a radiation is of about 10 to 12 percent. So this is all of this heat energy transfer is because is due to the uh, is is a dead loss basically we are not utilizing it so but we have to do it otherwise uh, uh, if we don't do it otherwise it will lead to the engine failure so uh, it is it is uh, quite essential it must be noted that heat carried away uh, by the coolant is a dead loss because not only no useful work can be obtained but a part of the engine power is also lost which is being used to remove this heat for example it means that uh, for the circulation of a uh, uh, water in the cooling system uh, we would be we would be operating a pump and that pump is going to be drive by the power which is being generated uh, by the engine so it is also so it is not only the dead loss of that uh, useful energy which is which we are not converting it into the useful work but it will also utilize some power which is which we have produced in order to remove that energy but but it is essential it is necessary to do that uh, in, if we in order to uh, avoid the engine failure so what what the engine designers basically do they 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 keep on increasing the efficiencies they are designing such engines which will keep on increasing the efficiencies which will keep on increasing the useful work output and reducing this amount of a total heat rejected so this is what the objectives of the automotive engine designers uh, are now moving forward uh, here you can see this is basically the uh, table of heat balance of the prime movers so for example if I have a four stroke SI engine then in four stroke SI engine here you can see that only about 26 percent of the energy input energy supplied energy released as a result of a combustion is being converted into the useful work and here you can see that 30 percent of the energy is being lost because of the cooling and 32 percent of the energy is being released in the exhaust and the remaining 12 percent is lost because of the radiation so for example if a fuel molecule released 100 kilojoules of energy from that 100 kilojoules you will only get 26 kilojoules of useful work and the remaining 74 percent kilojoules of the energy is being wasted in the form of either coolant radiation losses or in the exhaust so these these uh, uh, these losses have to uh, these losses will occur otherwise they are essential otherwise your engine will not operate efficiently so what the objective of the automotive engine designers uh, are they have to increase this power output they will try to somehow increase this power output either by reducing the frictional effects 
or by increasing the compression ratios they they will try to improve the power output so that uh, we we can utilize the maximum power which is being released by the fuel next we have uh, the diesel engine and in diesel engines you can see we have for uh, two stroke engine and for uh, four stroke engines for two stroke engine almost 30 percent of fuel energy is being converted into power and 21 percent is being lost to, uh, through coolant and 37 percent is being lost to through exhaust because in two stroke engines the temperatures are quite high even after the uh, whole completion of the cycle so that's why the exhaust losses in uh, exhaust losses in two stroke engines are quite high so uh, but when we are talking about a four stroke engine here you can see then in four stroke engine we have two other uh, two other types naturally aspirated and turbo charged so in in naturally aspirated you can see that we have 31 percent of the power output but when we use the turbo charger it will increase the power output uh, by four percent so the total work output will be about 35 percent so that's why in in larger engines or maybe in the sports cars you will see there is a turbocharger and uh, it will improve the power outputs uh, it will enhance the power outputs uh, turbochargers are not the part of the course content uh, but i will try to add some videos regarding uh, regarding the uh, turbocharger supercharger um, i will try to add some videos uh, regarding these uh, topics so that you will get the ideas about the modern technologies which are being incorporated in the ic engines as well now here you can see that with the addition of the turbocharger the losses to the coolant has been removed and it is very good because we have we have utilized some amount uh, we have utilized some amount of the uh, energy which was lost in the form of a coolant in some useful work you can see that in naturally aspirated we only we were only getting 31 percent of the power but in turbocharger we are getting 35 percent of the power so where does that four percent come it comes from this coolant losses now we are utilizing more more uh, we are utilizing more energy input and we are producing more power output moving forward next we have uh, gas turbines and in gas turbines we have simple Rankine cycle and a regenerative cycle now here you can see that in simple Rankine cycle and regenerative cycles the power outputs are almost efficient uh, but you, you can see that exhaust exhaust losses has been uh, uh, exhaust losses has been reduced so these are here uh, with the help of this table you might have got some uh, idea that how this total fuel energy percentage is being uh, is being converted into the other forms uh, so this input energy is converted either into useful work useful power or into the energy lost to the coolant or into the energy lost to the exhaust or maybe the energy lost due to radiation and lubrication now next uh, we have some demerits of overcooling so when we are talking about a cooling uh, we might occur with a problem of either overcooling our ic engine or maybe of about of undercooling our ic engine so uh, when when we are talking about uh, these uh, these thing this overcooling and undercooling we will, we will discuss uh, we will briefly discuss this the uh, some of the demerits regarding the uh, overcooling so overcooling is basically uh, harmful for our ic engine and it will have uh, negative effects it will result in some of the uh, um, 
very negative effects on our IC engine. So uh, starting off uh, uh, with the first one at very low temperatures the starting of engine becomes difficult means when we are talking about a colder climate uh, this overcooling will result in uh, in some difficulty uh, when we are starting our IC engine. So due to overcooling engine life is also reduced due to corrosion because it will let to the uh, uh, it will let to the cooling of the acidic products which are being uh, generated which are being produced during the combustion uh, process so it will result in the corrosion and can damage the ic engine if the engine is overcooled <coughs> some of the heat which could have been utilized in useful work will be lost means when we are overcooling our engine uh, we might have lost some of the energy which we could have utilized in useful work but we have lost it uh, because of the overcooling means for example if i had in, uh, if i had uh, obtained 100 kilojoules of energy from a burning of a fuel then because of the uh, overcooling i might get instead of uh, getting 26 uh, 26 percent of the power output i may get 25 percent or 24 percent of the power output so where does that one percent or two percent go it will be added here in the coolant so we we cool cool because of the overcooling we might have 32 percent of the loss of the input fuel energy because of the cooling the fuel will not vaporize properly it, it is talking about the in uh, fresh air fuel mixture because of the lower temperature the fuel may not vaporize properly thus it will lead to the incomplete combustion and that incomplete combustion product will condense on the walls of the uh, cylinder this will lead to the dilution of the oil in the pump and in addition it will it will cause corrosion uh, it will uh, uh, cause the corrosion in the cylinders as well so uh, uh, removal removal of uh, of oil film from the cylinder wall by unvaporized fuel leads to the increased in bore wear which will uh, so uh, because of this overcooling uh, as this uh, oil is being removed is being scrapped off from the cylinder wall it will it will lead to the increase in the uh, wear and tear of the cylinder bore next uh, we have uh, for example if we have overcooled uh, our ic engine it will it will lead to inadequate lubrication of the engine and since the uh, the lubrication oil is not being operating under uh, those conditions which it should have op been operated which in on in which it should have been operating means it is operating at some lower temperatures because of the overcooling so it may result in the in a bit of resistance in the flow of this lubrication oil and as a result we we may not have a proper lubrication and we might have some frictional losses some in, increment in the frictional losses as well and we may not get as uh, the desired power output so these are some of the uh, these were some of the demerits of uh, the overcooling um, now next uh, after the demerits of overcooling what happens if we undercool our ic engine by the word undercooling it means that uh, for example we should have rejected 100 kilojoules of energy but we are rejecting only 50 kilojoules of energy it means we are not cooling our ic engine well enough so some of the demerits are uh, since we are not cooling our ic engine well enough it can it can cause engine seizure and will shorten the valve lives as well because valves are the uh, most uh, most uh, we can say uh, there are more chances of the valve failure uh, instead of the engine uh, 
uh, valves are being uh, and uh, because if if we are uh, not cooling our engine i uh, now uh, if you are not cooling our ic engine well enough it will lead to the failure of the uh, valve it will short the it will shorten the valve life and there is a possible chances in of distortion of the uh, head gasket as well uh, and it may lead to the failure of the cylinder head as well and as a result of a undercooling we might have some hot spots in the combustion chamber and because of the presence of this hot spot we may have pre ignition of the fresh air fuel mixture in case of a si engine which may lead to the uh, knocking in our ic engine and will result in and will have a drastic effect on our ic engine the uh, such that to ignite the fuel before the spark plug does thus causing loss of a power and possible damage to the IC engine. So uh, we might have a phenomena of knocking because of the undercooling uh, because we are not rejecting that much amount of the energy which sh we should have. So we have to make sure that we reject the uh, we provide the uh, sufficient enough cooling. We should not undercool it. We should not overcool our IC engine. Water in the cooling system may boil and evaporate and uh, should should the oil film burn away additional friction and wear will occur between the cylinder and piston now this is this is about again the lubrication factor uh, if we uh, if we undercool it we our lubrication oil may get thin enough that it does not provide the proper film for the lubrication and as a result uh, it will it will cause the wearing between the cylinder and piston and may may have uh, we may have a engine seizure as well so these were some of the disadvantages of the undercooling so so we can conclude it by saying that we should we should not overcool our ic engine and we should also not undercool our ic engine now next is uh, we have gas temperature uh, variation um, in this gas temperature variation uh, we will discuss about the temperatures of the flue gases and what are the factors uh, which can affect uh, the gas temperature flue gas temperatures during the different processes of the cycle there is an appreciable temperature difference of gases inside the cylind engine cylinder so at the at the beginning of the induction stroke the temperature is uh, that of the clearance gases and as the induction stroke begins cool or fresh air fuel mixture is inducted into the engine cylinder and the temperature will fall rapidly now here you can see in the in this uh, graph that in the beginning of the induction stroke the temperatures are still quite high the gas temperatures are quite high let's say uh, it is above 1000 degrees celsius 1000 kelvins now with the induction of the fresh air fuel mixture which is cooled air fuel uh, mixture which is which is a quite low temperature the temperature will drop very significantly and here you can see we we uh, we have the values of about 200 or maybe 250 degrees celsius uh, at the end of the induction stroke at this point we may have a value of about 200 or maybe 250 degrees celsius 200 200 or 250 kelvins uh, but and here the piston piston has reached the uh, bottom dead center the induction stroke has ended because we have a 180 degree of the crank angle <coughs> and after that the compression will begin uh, this slight drop in the temperature is because even after the compression stroke begins the inlet valves are still open and they are being closed after some uh, duration even the piston has started moving towards the top dead center 
so after uh, the completion of the compression stroke here you can see since the inlet valves and exhaust valves are now closed only the air fuel mixture uh, is being compressed and because and as a result of the compression the particles are coming towards each other and their temperature will uh, not only their pressure but their temperature will also rise and they will rise up to the value of about something like uh, 950 or maybe you can say about 100 uh, 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 thousand Kelvin and here the combustion will start and as a result of a combustion here you can see there is a sudden rise in the temperature because a large amount of an excessive amount of the energy is being released as a result of the uh, as a result of the combustion and because of this uh, <coughs> increment because of this increment in the gas temperature now here you can see as uh, the temperatures have gone beyond 2000 degrees celsius and this happens when the just piston has reached the top dead center at the end of the compression stroke and after that you can see that temperature will start to fall because we have the expansion stroke and temperature will fall up to the very lower values and after that the exhaust stroke will start uh, here again the piston has reached the bottom dead center the power stroke has been ended and after that the exhaust stroke is starts and the flue gases would be sent uh, outside the combustion chamber through the exhaust manifold into the exhaust now you, here you can see that this exhaust is still at quite high temperature something around uh, above 1000 degrees celsius it is still uh, the temperature is still uh, above 1000 uh, kelvin sorry not degree celsius 1000 kelvins it is still above uh, 1000 kelvins uh, we can utilize generally these these exhausts are being utilized in uh, operating some uh, absorption chillers or maybe some uh, maybe in some boiler and generating the steam for some textile industry process uh, we usually do not uh, release this exhaust at, sir, at higher temperatures into the uh, atmosphere so this is how the gas temperature variation is occurring uh, now uh, just uh, completing this text uh, about that uh, graph during compression process the temperature increases and uh, its maximum value at the end of a uh, maximum value will occur at the end of a combustion process during the expansion process the temperature decreases and then drops very rapidly during the uh, during the exhaust release process uh, in actual temperature in in actual engine there is some temperature drops during the uh, exhaust process so so this is what is happening uh, this this was all about the figure which I explained earlier. Um, um, still, this exhaust is at quite high temperature, and we can utilize this exhaust uh, in operating some absorption chiller or maybe operating some steam generator uh, to utilize that steam for the process plant. Um, we usually do not release this this much high temperature exhaust into the uh, atmosphere. Now moving forward we have some uh, effects of the operating variable on the engine heat transfer. The first one is of the compression ratio. So uh, here you can see that uh, from the figure you can we can see that while increasing the compression ratio from 5 to 6 there is there is a very there is a sudden uh, increment you can see uh, there is a loss some 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 decrease in the heat rejected and uh, it means that uh, some amount of the energy is being utilized 
uh, in doing some useful work and that that occurs because uh, by increasing the compression ratio we have basically increased the expansion stroke so some of the uh, energy input is being utilized in doing some useful work but uh, moving forward we do not have that much eff efficient uh, uh, that much increment in the heat rejected that much increment decrease in the heat rejection it will remain uh, more or less uh, constant so we uh, we can conclude it by saying that by increasing the uh, compression ratio we we might have some decrease in heat rejection this heat rejection is being decreased means that we we have increased the useful work output but it doesn't mean that by if we keep increasing the compression ratio this heat rejection will keep decreasing it will decrease up to some point up to some extent but after that it, the decrease in heat rejection will not be that uh, efficient will not be that effective so the graph in general shows that compression ratio increases there is a marginal reduction in the heat rejection as the compression ratio is increased the the gas temperatures near top dead center is has also increased slightly but due to greater expansion ratios there is a considerable decrease in the gas outlet gas exhaust temperature near bottom dead center due to greater expansion the exhaust gas temperature is also reduced to a very much lower value and the heat rejected during blow down is also less so uh, moving forward next factor we have is of the air fuel ratio uh, so far we have studied a lot about the air fuel ratios and we have studied that by increasing the air fuel ratio uh, the flame temperatures uh, increase and not only the flame temperature but also the flame speed increases so uh, and we have also studied that the maximum flame temperature and the maximum uh, maximum flame speeds occur when the fuel air ratio is of, of about 1 ratio 12 this is a, this is where the maximum mean gas temperatures and flame temperatures will occur and not only that the maximum heat rejection will also take place uh, at this point so here with this uh, graph we can see that at this point when when the uh, equivalence ratio is of about uh, 1.1 relative air fuel ratio is of about 1.1 to maybe you can say 1.2 we have we have the highest heat rejection of about uh, 300 kilojoules per minute maybe we can say uh, so heat rejections are quite high at this uh, fuel layer uh, ratio so uh, this is what this graph is telling us so so if, if we increase the air fuel ratio more the heat rejection will decrease because we are providing a very rich air fuel mixture uh, because we are providing if we increase the fuel air ratio it means beyond this point we, are, we have a lean air fuel mixture because we are talking about fuel air ratio here not air fuel ratio we have lean mixture if we go here and uh, if we if we go beyond here we have uh, rich air fuel uh, mixture so uh, air fuel ratio the inlet temperature and exhaust pressures are only variable which appear to influence gas temperature as shown in figure the the temperature of the cylinder gases and the flame speed are affected by the fuel air ratio and at relative fuel air ratio of 1 is to 1 uh, 1 ratio of 12 maximum mean gas temperature occurs and not only that but maximum heat rejection also occurs so in this graph here you can see that uh, at the fuel relative fuel ratio of 1 uh, we have the maximum uh, we have the uh, maximum gas temperatures here 
and if you go further increase the temperature if we further increase the air fuel ratio th the gas temperatures will start decreasing and uh, if, not only that if we further decrease the uh, fuel air ratio the gas temperatures will also start decreasing so so air fuel ratio is also basically controlling the gas temperature as well so this is that is why the heat the amount of the heat rejected uh, is is being affected by the relative fuel air uh, ratio next is uh, we have the ignition timing um, when the spark advance is different from the optimum value the amount of the heat rejected to the cooling system will also increase it means that if we increase the amount of the spark advance the amount of the heat rejected to the cooling system will increase and this is this is not required we do not want it because we are basically rejecting some amount of the energy without utilizing it in some useful work so it is due to the fact that uh, that any value of the spark advance other than the minimum spark advance <coughs> which is required which is essential for the best torque output will will reduce the power output in si engine and it will result in uh, in the more amount of the heat rejection thus it is a loss of a power so uh, we we can adjust the ad spark in advance up to the minimum value which is being provided by the manufacturer uh, if we further increases otherwise it will lead to it will lead to the ineffective uh, uh, in a ineffective operation of our IC engine and it will reduce the power output of our IC engine. Next we have uh, load and speed. Okay, in case of uh, CI engines what we do is we basically only enter the mass of uh, air uh, in the combustion chamber and fuel is being injected afterward after the compression process. So the amount of the fuel which is being sprayed can be changed can be increased as the as we have increased the load as we have changed the load but in case of si engine the temperature variation is not much with changes in the load but in ci engines it it changes along with the load because we can increase the amount of the fuel injected but in si engines we cannot just we cannot do that so the the temperature variations are not that much so gas temperature remains at higher average with the increase in engine speed so as the engine speed increases the gas temperature will also increase if the load is constant the heat input per cycle with the fuel increases with speed at least in the upper end because of increased frictional losses so so this is uh, what is occurring here that with the increase in the engine speed even if we have a constant load we have not increased the load we have just increased the engine speed uh, the gas temperature will increase so with the increment in this gas temperature the amount of the heat transfer uh, this uh, we can say that the amount of the heat transfer delta Q will also be increased. The amount of the heat rejected to the cooling system will also increase with the, with the increase in the gas temperature, gas cycle temperature. Okay, uh, so now uh, <coughs> moving towards the cooling system, as I mentioned earlier, I that these cooling system are basically of two types first one is uh, air cooling system and uh, the second one is the water cooling system uh, air cooling system is also written as is also referred as direct cooling systems whereas water cooled systems are referred as indirect cooling system and uh, this is because uh, in air cooling system the engine is being cooled 
directly with the air whereas in indirect cooling system engine is being cooled by water and that water is being then cooled by air so that is why we are basically in air, air cooling we are directly cooling our ic engine with air but in water cooling we first cool it with the water and then we cool water with the air that is why it is it they are being known as indirect cooling system and then in this indirect cooling system we have this five different types of a configuration i will discuss these five types of a configuration in the next video lecture in this video lecture i will conclude this video by just discussing the the basics of the air cooling system and water cooling system now moving forward <coughs> in air cooling system uh, air cooled engines basically depend upon the air flow which is which is blowing which is flowing across the external surfaces of the engine cylinder and the this air will basically remove the necessary heat which has to be dissipated into the uh, atmosphere which has to be dissipated by the engine this heat dissipation depends upon the following factors the first one is the uh, area of cooling surfaces second is the mass of the mass flow rate of the air next is the temperature difference between the cylinder and the air and the last one is the conductivity of a metal <coughs> so uh, this is what this heat transfer is all about Uh, there are four factors on which the heat transfer depends first one is the area of cooling surface second is the mass flow rate of the air which is blowing which is flowing across the ic engine third is the temperature difference between the cylinder and air and last is the conductivity of a material uh, the area of cooling surface so uh, uh, we can we can increase the heat transfer by either increasing these factors so again the temperature difference we cannot control it because uh, it is uh, we cannot control the temperature of the surrounding similarly conductivity of a metal cannot be changed as well uh, we can we can control these two factors either we can increase the area or we can increase the mass flow rate of air we can increase the mass flow rate of air by either installing some uh, fan or blower uh, but uh, in motorcycles you can see that we do not have the fan or blowers we uh, in motorcycles we basically incorporate this air cooling system and instead of using this fan and uh, fans and blowers etc we we have increased the surface area of the ic engine by incorporating the heat transfer fins the area of the cooling surface is increased by forming a thin either integrally by machining them or on outer surface of engine cylinder or cylinder head by at or by attaching separate fins to them here you can see that this is what i am talking about these are the fins they have increased the surface area they have increased the surface area of our ic engine and because of these fins the surface area of our ic engine has been increased therefore the heat transfer the amount of the heat rejected uh, can be improved and we do not need to add some fan or blower to increase the heat transfer uh, there is there are fins in the cylinder head and here you can see as well there are fins in the cylinder Uh, block as well so uh, and you can you can see these fins in your motorcycles if you have any motorcycle in your home uh, you can see there are fins in the ic engine applications uh, air cooling systems are generally 
used for the small engines and engines where uh, there is a restriction like uh, we cannot use a water cooled system so like uh, in some industrial and agricultural uh, engines there there are some limitation that we cannot use the water uh, water as a coolant so in such uh, in such places where we cannot use we do not have a water or we cannot use a water we can incorporate such engine designs but again the cooling cooling of uh, uh, but these engines can be uh, will be of a smaller size we cannot use uh, these engines for a large capacity large uh, engines advantages uh, the design of an engine is quite simpler as there are no water jackets water jackets are being provided in uh, by drilling some holes in in, in in the in cylinder block and cylinder heads i will show you how these water jackets uh, uh, look like but uh, in air cool system we do not have such requirements uh, we only need it, need fins and fins are fins can be uh, either integrated integrated by casting or by some other methods as well there is a absence of a cooling pipes and radiators which makes the cooling system quite simpler since there is no water there is no chance of the coolant leakage and uh, the water is not present in the water jacket therefore uh, there is no chances of the freezing as well uh, where we have colder climate, uh, climate and the work to power ratio of the air cooled engines are also less as compared to the uh, water cooled engine therefore they are only being incorporated in a small sized engine installation of air cooled engine is quite easier but in water cooled system a separate installation of a uh, water cooled system is required the control of cooling system is much easier than the water cooled system an air cooled system and air cooled engine can take up some degree of damage means for example if a one fin from a rice engine is broken it will not affect a lot in the heat transfer of uh, of the ice engine but in case of a water cooled system for example if uh, if there is a hole in the radiator it will lead to the inefficient uh, water cooled engine therefore it will require a larger maintenance that, that is why you can see that the cooling system of a car requires a larger maintenance as compared to the cooling system of a motorcycle high mean cycle temperatures uh, mean reduced carbon deposits on the combustion chamber wall this will uh, give a better engine performance the warm up performance of the air cool engine is uh, better which will result in low wear of the cylinders so these are some of the advantages now moving towards some of the disadvantages their movement is noisy this is not much of a disadvantage as the in, as ic engines are also noisy they are, uh, so their noise is not that much uh, effective uh, as compared to the noise of the ic engine then the the next disadvantage is of the great imp greater importance it it gives the non uniform cooling this is of greater importance we do not want this non uniform cooling otherwise it will leave some thermal stresses in 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 our engine the the output of air cooled engine is uh, less than the liquid cooled uh, engine so again uh, as i can ex say that the value of uh, cp for air is almost 1.005 but uh, value of cp for uh, water is about 4.2 uh, so uh, th because because of this higher value of cp water has a larger capacity to uh, take the heat to absorb the heat therefore the performance of the water cooled systems are quite high Uh, their maintenance uh, is not easy because the fins are very close to each other and in case some dust particles are uh, in case if some some dust particles are present in between these fins it is difficult to remove them they are they they are smaller 
uh, they incorporate smaller useful compression ratios they cannot be used for a high power uh, engines their volumetric efficiencies are also lower as compared to the uh, water cooled system because they are not cooling the RIC engine very effectively next we have the water cooled system and as I mentioned earlier that in water cooled system they are efficient as compared to the air cooled system but, but they are designing but their design is quite complex as compared to the uh, air cooled system so uh, because they are designing incorporates these water jackets here you can see these are the water jackets which I was talking about and across these water these water jackets are basically drilled they are being uh, made in the cylinder block here you can see it is a part of a cylinder block and water is flowing across it and it will take the energy from the cylinder block and across the piston as well and and across the cylinder head as well here you can see the water is circulating across it so it is taking the energy from the engine therefore they can be utilized for high power engine because they can take a, take a large amount of energy from a IC engine and it can protect uh, even if our IC engine is operating at very high temperatures and at higher load and higher speeds so uh, in this system mainly water is used and it is made to circulate through the jackets provided around the cylinder cylinder head and valve ports and seats where where it extracts the most of the heat the diagrammatic sketch of uh, water circulating passage via water jacket is shown in the next slide as I have shown you earlier it consists of a long flat thin wall tubes uh, with an opening facing the water pump outlet and we have several opening along its length across which the water uh, flows and uh, the heat is transferred from the cylinder walls and other parts because of convection and conduction the liquid becomes heated in its passages through the jackets and in as in turn cooled by means of a air cooled radiator system so as i mentioned earlier these type of systems are also known as the indirect cooling system because they because they are cooling the cooling our ice engine and not only that they are cooling our ice engine but they are also uh, after getting heat up this water is being cooled by the air that is why these systems are known as the indirect cooling systems uh, next uh, here you can see that the heat from the liquid in turn is transferred to the air hence it is called indirect cooling system water cooling system can be uh, can be carried out by one of the five different methods and th these methods are mentioned below thermosiphon cooling forced or pump cooling cooling with thermostatic regulator pressurized water cooling and evaporative cooling as i mentioned earlier that uh, i will conclude this video just by discussing the air, brief discussion regarding the air and water cool system i will not go into the details of these five methods in this video i will continue these five methods in the next video moving forward i will discuss some of the advantages of these water cool system they have a very compact design because water jackets are being incorporated in cylinder uh, in cylinder block and cylinder heads they have a lesser fuel uh, uh, the, uh, the fuel consumption of high compression liquid engine is rather lower than the air cooled engine means they will consume lesser amount of the fuel because of the efficient cooling the disadvantage of the air cooling system was that we have a non-uniform cooling the water water cooling system provides the even cooling across the cylinder block and head because the, there are water jackets present inside the cylinder in case of a water cooled engine installation is not necessarily uh, be at the front of the auto automobile vehicle in air cooled the installation should be in front of the car but in water cooled 
installation is not necessary to be in front of the car but but uh, you can see that the radiators are placed in front of the car because in radiators the warm water is passing through and air is required to cool it so radiators are placed in front of a car but the entire water system is being placed you can place it anywhere in in your automobile but in uh, air cooled system it is necessary to place the entire engine in front of the uh, in front the size of the engine does not involve serious uh, problem as far as the design of a cooling system is concerned in case of a air cooling engines particularly in high power uh, high horsepower range difficulty is encountered in circulation of required quantity of the air for cooling process again since we have a water jackets we can circulate the desired amount of a liquid but in case of a air cool system we cannot provide we cannot uh, we, we we might face some difficulties uh, in uh, providing the desired amount of air for cooling next advantage is that the volumetric efficiencies are quite higher some of the disadvantages are that they are dependent on the supply of the water for circulation means there will be a pump which will be supplying the water into the ic engine into these water jackets the power absorbed by these these by this water pump is considerably larger than the cooling fans in the event of a failure of this cooling system we we might occur the, some of the uh, some serious damage uh, in our ic engine uh, i mean i can um as a result of a failure of your water cooling system your engine gasket may get damaged and uh, as a result they, you, you may require to overhaul your engine because of the engine seizure as well the cost of such systems are quite high because you need a separate uh, radiator system and uh, even the designing is quite complex so there the manufacturing of the engines are also quite high system requires considerable attention for maintenance their performance is also weather sensitive in case in in very uh, cold conditions uh, the water inside the water jacket may get freeze and as a result your car may not get start in very very uh, cold environment so the warm up performance is poor and has a starting problem particularly in cold weather so uh, i will conclude this video lecture uh, here uh, up to the, up to the disadvantages of the water cooling system in the next class we will briefly go through the uh, five systems which are usually being incorporated in the uh, in the water cooled system which are thermo siphon cooling system forced and pump cooling system cooling with thermostatic regulator pressurized water cooling and and evaporative cooling as well so uh, i expect you guys to study uh, this topic to carefully watch this video and uh, note down in case in case you have any question just note down your questions and you can ask me those questions in the online section or uh, uh, through your whatsapp group or maybe in the google classroom as well so till next video uh, Allah Hafiz